right, everybody, I got this video here that I want you to watch. And I'm going to talk about this because right now I'm just in this little season where I'm defending the Son of God. And I'm defending his existence. Now, I want you to take a listen to this clip I'm about to play. And then I'm going to come back after it and we're going to talk about it. It. Talking about the body. Remember, he right. shed the blood and the water. And the water. So the only thing that was left on the cross was the identity of the Son of God, Jesus. That's yeah. right. And that was the seal. That body was the same body that Mary birthed into the world. That's right. And it had the same title, Son of God. Yeah. It had the same title, Messiah. That's the right. only difference was it was not an individual son with natural life. That's right. So the son, the natural life of the Son of God ended on the cross. His natural life, his blood. That's right. But that body still was a son of flesh and bone. All right. So now. Before I get started, let me say this. How are you going to have the scriptural evidence and understanding that I'm trying to present to you if you don't listen to the whole video? And I'm saying that because if you're going to listen to this video and see what I want to present to you, then you have to watch the whole thing. I'm going to provide a lot of scriptural evidence that's going to show uh that's going to show you something that you may not have been taught or may not have been told all right now i, I kind of want to go on what gino just said and we talking about the natural life of the son ending on the cross now i want to talk about that so just keep in mind that you have to listen if you want to see what i'm trying to present to you but if you get off the video the moment i say something that you may not agree with or Gino may didn't say, then you would never get the understanding because you so quick to jump off the video when I say something. But let me present to you the scriptures because I want you to see and have a clear understanding and have the truth about this matter. So now what I want to do is in the book of Matthew chapter 27, I want to first start this teaching off with the death of Jesus. Now, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. So we talking about Jesus on the cross. The Bible says he cried again with a loud voice. It says he yielded up the ghost. Now, when it says he yielded up the ghost, that means that the spirit left the body and he died. Okay? Now, let's look over at John chapter 19. So I want to go to John 19, and I want to start reading at verse 30 because I need to show you something, uh, an, another account of this from John. Now, John 19, starting, 13, um, starting in verse 30 says, it says, when Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar. Now, he's on the cross. When they put the vinegar to his mouth, he said, it is finished. Now, he didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished, all right? He's talking about the work, but I'll say that for another video. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, all right? So, he bowed his head. The Bible says he gave up the ghost. Now, let's keep going, then i explain. The Jews, therefore, verse 31, the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon a cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was in high day, but sought Pilate that their legs might be broken. See, they didn't want their bodies to be, there was Jesus and the two thieves on a cross. They, they didn't want their bodies to be on a cross on a Sabbath day. So therefore they besought, they reached out to Pilate so that their legs might be broken. This is so they can go ahead and die. He says, um, but salt powder that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. So when they came to Jesus while he was on the cross, he had already been dead already. See, and there's something else I'm going to point out here. The body without the spirit is dead, according to James 2, 26. The Bible says the body without the spirit is dead. So remember, we read that Jesus in verse 30, he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So when he gave up the ghost, that means his spirit left. And what spirit is that? That's the spirit of life. 
Now, it's something I'm going to show you here that's being said in Ecclesiastes 12. I'm going to go to that, but first, let's finish this. So, at verse 33, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. So, as you can see, Jesus was already dead before they pierced him. And, and that's significant to this teaching, what I'm going to say. Pay attention. So when they pierced him, the blood and water came out, but he was already dead. Now, because we know that scripture said that life is lied in the blood. And we'll go to that later. But the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, um, I just, I'm just i not going to go to it. But it talks about how the um, the dust, talking about the body, it goes back to the earth. We go back to the, um, the body, go back to dust. In the spirit, it goes back to God who gave it. So, James clarifies and says that the body without the spirit is dead. So, Ecclesiastes says that that body, or it goes to dust, it returns to the earth. And the spirit goes back to God who gave it. Now, that's the spirit of life. See, because even though life is in the blood, as it says in, I believe, um, what's that, Leviticus? It says that the life is in the blood. Yeah, Leviticus 17. Life is in the blood. So even though Jesus, now, now check this out. Jesus still had the blood in his body because they didn't pierce his side yet. Um, They didn't pierce him yet in order for, him, well, they didn't pierce him in order for him to die. The Bible says that after he bowed his head, he gave up the ghost. And when they went seeking to break the legs of those that was on the cross, they when they came to Jesus, he was already dead. And then afterwards, they pierced him in a side and forth, which came out blood and water. Now, that's very significant, all right? So he was dead already, all right? Now, let's keep on going. Let's keep going. Now... Let's go now to the book of John chapter 10. And we're going to get back to that blood stuff later. But John chapter 10, let's look at verse number 17. Now, Jesus said this before he died. He says, therefore, do my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Now, Gino says that the natural life of the son of God came to an end on the cross the natural life, all right? So Jesus says that the father loved him because he laid down his life that he might take it again. So Jesus letting them know, or he letting us know that he laid down his life, meaning he, he died, all right? When you lay down your life, you die. He says that he might take it again. So he was going to take his life again. So people say that Jesus, the son of God, ended on the cross when yet he laid down his life that he might take it again. So he didn't end on the cross. Now, Gino said that the natural life came to an end on the cross. Now, let's explain that. You have to follow me in scripture in order to get an understanding of, of that teaching there. Now, let's look at, um, and, and we finna touch on that, but first let's go to 1 Peter. I want to take you to 1 Peter, I believe that's uh, around verse number 18. 1 Peter, uh, well, chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, let's look at verse 18 and 19. It says, for Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. So the Bible says that he was put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. So I want you to understand this. When Gino says that the natural life of the son of God ended on the cross and many say that well the son of God ended on the cross I'm going to show you why that's not uh, giving very accurate information alright because the Bible he, he says here Peter is that Christ was put to death in the flesh 
but quickened by the spirit. Now that spirit that goes back to God who gave it, that's the spirit of life. The body without the spirit is dead. However, you must not forget that you yourself is still a soul. Or some people say a spirit, but you are a soul. Because remember, this body that we are in, this is just where the soul and the spirit lives inside of. This is the temple. Okay? But you yourself, you are the soul. Because think about it. I'm going to show you scripture. All right? I'm going to show you scripture on Jesus. So, because right now we're talking about what happened after he died. The Bible says that he was put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. He says, um, so he was quickened or he was made alive by the spirit. He says, by which he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So his body was put to death, but by the spirit of God, he was quickened or he was made alive. And by that spirit is how he he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Now, some say that Jesus, he was put to death in the flesh and that it was God, the father himself, that that went and preached to the spirits in prison. But that's not what the scripture said. The scripture says. He says that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit by which also he went. And preached unto the spirits in prison. So it was by the spirit that he went and preached into the spirits in prison. All right. So let's keep going. Let's look at um, now. I, I want to get to this whole thing about when I said you was a soul. All right. So now Jesus, even though he was put to death in the flesh, the Bible said he was quickened by um, the spirit. Now let's look at um, let's go to. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. And let's look at starting at verse number 30. Acts 13. I'm going to start at 33. Let's start at 33. It says, God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he raised up Jesus again. So understand. The Bible didn't say that God got in that body and it was all God the Father. Look at what the scripture is saying clearly. He says, verse the Acts 13, 33, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second Psalm, thou art my son this day have I begotten thee? So in order for God to raise up Jesus again, that shows you, see, many people say, well, that's the body. But the Bible says he raised up Jesus. So if he raised up Jesus, what well, people say, well, the son of God ended on the cross. But Jesus himself said in the book of John, chapter 5 let me go to it john chapter 5 at verse number i believe it's 26 he says for as the father had life in himself so had he given to the son to have life in himself so just like god has life in himself he gave his son to have life in himself that meaning so that he could be self-existent OK, so when you see the scripture saying in Acts 13, 33, that God hath fulfilled the same unto us to the children and that he raised up Jesus again. Remember, he raised up Jesus again. Um, he was able to raise him up again, not the body up again. He raised up Jesus because Jesus still had life. The father had given him life in himself. So even though he was put to death in the flesh, he was still quickened by the spirit. See, so he didn't end on the cross. Now, we're going to still get more on this natural life of his ending on the cross. 
Now let's look at uh like I said, oh yeah, let's keep going. So X thirty three. Now let's read um X thirteen. Let's read thirty four. Well, let's read 33 agreeing for clarity's sake. So God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he raised up Jesus again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead. See, he raised up him from the dead. Remember, Jesus was put to death in the flesh. But yet, the Bible says here, verse 34, and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption. He said, on this wise, I give you the sure mercies of David. All right. So he raised him up from the dead. So he couldn't end on the cross if God raised him up from the dead. Jesus says, I lay down my life that I might take it again. So he wasn't going to end there. He was going to take his life up again. He was going to take his life, his life up again. All right. Now let's keep going. Verse 36. No, verse 35. He says, wherefore, he said also in another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So he wasn't going to end on the cross. If he would have ended on the cross, he would have suffered corruption. But he didn't suffer corruption, as the scripture says. He says, wherefore he said also in another psalm, thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. So God raised him again. Now we have to look at the book of Acts chapter 2 because I mentioned to you how Jesus had his own life. And I also mentioned to you how we are a soul that's in the body. So even though our bodies get put to death, we get put to death in the flesh, but we are still a soul. Now, Jesus said also something to Mary uh, or Martha in the book of um, John chapter 10. He says, uh, hold on, let's see here. Uh, let's see what he said. In the book of John chapter 10, I think it's around. Let me see. Verse number. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. It's, ver it's, it's John chapter 11. Jesus says in um, John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said unto her, he was talking to Martha. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So Jesus said that those that believe in him, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So even though he dead, well, in the flesh, he says, Jesus says, yet shall he live. See, he gonna live. He not talking about the body. Because he says, he that believeth in me, though he were dead. Well, how are you dead in your body? The body without the spirit is dead. The body is dead. That don't mean you are dead. The body without the spirit is dead. So he that believeth in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live. He's dead. Why? Well, because his body is dead. But Jesus says, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. So I want you to, I want to say that. Because you, like the he, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Well, how is he going to live? Because the body is just the, the shell. That's just the temple that the soul is in. And let, let me give you some clarity on that. Look at Acts chapter 2. Let's look at verse uh, 26. No, let's start at 25. For David speaking concerning him. This is David speaking concerning Jesus, the Son of God. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou would not leave, because thou would not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So he's, he's speaking on a scripture concerning when Jesus 
was said, because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So his soul was not left in hell. Remember, Jesus says that when he died, he said, just like Jonah was in a in the uh, the belly of the in the belly of the well for three days and three nights, he says, so shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. So the heart of the earth is hell. So his soul was not left in hell or the heart of the earth. Remember, he died, he was buried, and he resurrected. So his soul was not left in hell. So his body, we know, was placed in a sepulcher. All right? But his soul, Jesus said he was going to go to the heart of the earth. So he had to go into the heart of the earth as he said. In 1 Peter 3, 18, we read that he was put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So how did he do that? It was by the spirit. The spirit made him alive in that soul that he is well because he's a soul we are souls why because god gave us life in ourselves just like he gave his son life in himself that means so that we could be self-existent so just like we are self-existent jesus was also self exist he is self-existent and see some people they find it hard to believe because they think that jesus christ is the father well jesus did God was in him, but God is also in us. If we have the spirit of God, then that's God in us. So Jesus had God, the fullness of God in him, the Bible says, bodily. For the fullness of the Godhead was in him bodily. So he had God in him, but yet he still had life in himself. He still was self-existent with the fullness of God in him. Some say he was fully man, fully God. He had the fullness of the Godhead in him bodily. And we have the Spirit of God in us when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit. But that don't make us God. But we still got him in us. All right? And God works through us just like he worked through his son. All right? So don't forget that. Now, Leviticus chapter 17, uh, verse 4. Let's go to that. Leviticus, oh, Leviticus 17, verse 4. It says here that, uh, let me go to it. He says, is that verse 4? Let me make sure, make sure. 14. Leviticus 17, 14. It says, For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I say unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. So the life of the flesh, the um, is in the blood. The life of flesh is in the blood. Um, the, um, so the bodies, the flesh that we are in, the blood is is uh th these bodies need blood in order to live, right? God put life of our flesh in the blood however i showed you earlier that jesus still had his blood and he died that's because he gave up the ghost so the body without the spirit is dead however um, you can still be dead with the blood in you but these bodies are considered flesh and blood bodies all right these bodies need the blood in it or else if the blood leaves then the spirit gonna leave it but the spirit can leave it even though the blood is in it all right, so the spirit can leave and your body die. And your body can be dead with the blood in it. I hope you understand that. That the blood in the body, it has to be in this body in order to live. So if the body is drained out the, if the blood is drained out the body, that body going to die. Or if the spirit leave that body, the body going to die even though it got blood in it. So don't forget that. So... But Jesus, but Jesus, when he was in the flesh, he was like us, right? 
he he had blood. He was like us. He had blood. So that life of the body, it was in the blood. All right. But when he died, he was quickened by the spirit. And so that's how he lives now. Now, let's get into how he lives um, apart from this blood. And I'm talking about Jesus, the son of God. I'm not talking about God, the father. The Bible says he was quickened by the spirit in that God raised him from the dead. So now this next video, we're going to, uh, in part two, we're going to talk about how he lives apart from their blood.